The people of the southeast region of Nigeria are leaving no stone unturned in their clamor for the Igbo presidency. More aspirants have now come out from the region, which is an indication that people are more than anything else serious about their ambition for the number one office in the country. Among the top aspirants are the former Senate President Pius Ayim Pius, former Imo State Governor Rocha Sokorocha, former President of the Nigerian Pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria Sam Ohuabunwa, and the former Central Bank Deputy Governor Kingsley Mogalu. We now cross live to Abuja where one of the aspirants, Rocha Sokorocha, is waiting to speak on his ambition. God bless them all. God bless the land of Bauchi State, the land of Gombe State, Yobe State, Borno State, Taraba State, Adamawa State. God bless them all. God bless the land of Anambra State, Ebony State, Abia State, Enugu State, and Imo State. God bless them all. God bless our federal capital territory. God bless them all. My brothers and sisters, let's now from now henceforth act under the settled conviction that this 36 states plus Abuja is our country, our whole country, and nothing but our country. God bless Nigeria. I'm a proud Nigerian. I have no other country on the surface of this earth I can call mine other than Nigeria. My wife seated here is a Nigerian. My six children, three boys, three girls, they are Nigerians. My brothers are Nigerians, my sisters are Nigerians. Everything about me is Nigerian. And I'm a Nigerian not because I'm born a Nigerian. I'm a Nigerian not because I'm black. I'm a Nigerian not because I'm an Igbo man. I'm a Nigerian because the blood that runs through my veins is a Niger blood. Therefore, I speak to you today. My Bible tells me, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. You must permit me at this moment to speak without a written speech, to speak not with a prepared text, because I want to pour my heart to my nation. And I want all of you to hear me and hear me well and feel me because I want the entire nation to know where I'm coming from and where I'm going to and why I want to do what I'm about to do today. I speak to you again with a new Nigerian spirit. I speak to you with this unique spirit, a new spirit completely. I speak to you from the point of view of a high, haughty, generous, and noble spirit. The spirit is high because it despises everything mean and small and low and vulgar considerations. The spirit is haughty because it despises and ignores Little things that not help mankind. It is called a general spirit. It's a spirit that's considered the plight of the needy, the poor, and the indigent, giving them support. And it is called a noble spirit. This spirit that dreads shame and dishonor as greatest evil of mankind. That's the spirit with which I speak to you today. My heart is full of mixed feelings. One side of me is very joyous, and the other side, my heart bleeds. Twenty years ago, I ran for the office of the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Because of my passion and vision to make great my nation. That I did not succeed. Six years later again, I attempted to run for the office of the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. An election that saw me came second to our dear President, late President 
Umaru Yaradua, may his soul rest in peace. Again, on the four, 2014, just of recent, on the platform of APC, I again ran for the office of the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, which ushered in our dear President, President Mohamed Buhari. Folks and friends, relations, have besieged me with questions as they cannot understand why I continuously have insisted in politics, despite, unquote, dirtiness associated with politics. One of my close friends said to me, Rochas, can I advise you? I said, go ahead and advise me. He said, if I were you, leave politics. You are blessed, you are wealthy. God has blessed you in all ramifications. And you have no business being in this dirty thing called politics. You've, you've been arrested severally. You've been molested, cajoled. Your children arrested, your wife humiliated. I advise you, pack your load and find somewhere in the comfort of America or Japan or UAE and enjoy the rest of your life. That's the suggestions, advice from the folks. But I said to them, my friend, what you do not know, that I'm not in politics for what I can get, I'm in politics for what I can give. Because for me, I prize honor more than life, and I prize glory more than wealth. What my friend did not understand is that I'm not satisfied. And I'm not satisfied, ladies and gentlemen. My heart bleeds. My heart bleeds for as long as a little boy in Medjugorje cannot go to school, and that little child in Casina cannot go to school. And my nation has been tagged with 14.3 million out of school children. I'm not satisfied. I'm not satisfied that Nigerians could go to bed with fear that Nigerians can no longer sleep with their eyes closed. Insecurity is ravaging our nation. I'm not satisfied. I'm not satisfied for as long as poverty becomes the order of the day. And Nigerians go hungry, looking for food to eat in such a great nation. I'm not satisfied. And the worst of it all, nations have tagged us the capital poverty of the world. I disagree. They have tagged us the worst terrorist country in the world after Afghanistan and Mali. I disagree. They've said to us we are overborrowed. Our GDP is not right. Mortality rate is not right. Unemployment is too high in Nigeria. Insecurity and everything. I do not agree. That might be the fact under their statistics and research, but that's not the truth. The truth is that we are a great nation. We are a blessed nation. God has blessed us with abundant human and material resources. This nation lacks anything. We are the greatest of them all. And time will come when this manifest truth will make manifest. <laughs> but it might be appropriate at this point for me to give honor to whom honor is due and to share with you some of my visions for this nation. Again, not written and not a prepared text because I speak from my mind how I feel about this great nation. First, to those of you who have gathered here, you must have come from your little places. And I'm sure some of you must have come here, not sure of what happens to, of your family tomorrow. I'm sure some of you borrowed money to come here. I'm sure some of you are here looking, asking, when would the help come? The, the help has come. There is a new Nigeria. Let me therefore appreciate the ambassadors who are here, who have made our time to come and hear me out. And I want you to extend this message to your countries that a new Nigeria is about to come. We are no longer that which nations say we are. We are not that which World Bank say we are. We are Nigerians and we are great people. And we love one another. Let me honor the accent of our nation, the men and women who struggled for our independence. And those who are sleepless night thinking about Nigeria, the actors of our coat of arms, those who designed our flag, green, white, green, this day I remember them. 
the Aziki West, the Awolo Wolves, the Sadaunas, the Tafat Belewas, and the host of them. They are not here today and will not be here because they'll be called to the world beyond. But wherever they are, I want to salute their spirit. May their soul rest in peace. And may the labels of our heroes past never be in vain. I salute them. But in the new Nigeria, I want to honor them in the new Nigeria. Tourism has been spoken so much about, yet without any practical realities. In the new Nigeria, the history of our founding fathers shall constitute the first stepping stone into the development of Nigerian tourism. <laughs> to you, our recent but not too old leaders, the Democrats and those who had handled the affairs of this country, the Babangidas, the Shagaris, Absalams, Abachas, the Adwas, the Jonathans, the Obasan Joes, two males mention. And of course, of recent, our dear president, President Mohammed Buhari, to all of you, this nation shall honor you. We are not here to condemn your activities, but rather to improve and build on the foundation which we have laid for our great nation. And to our traditional rulers, the custodians of our culture and tradition, the new Nigeria shall write the principles of democracy, and we shall no longer define democracy as the government of the people, by the people, and for the people. We shall now define democracy for the inclusiveness of the traditional rulers, as government of the people, by the people, for the people, and with the people. That brings us to the issue of community government. Our traditional rulers shall play a very key role in the new Nigeria because our culture, our tradition is imperative. Every society of mankind is created by God with their culture and tradition. For no nation can grow above or beyond their culture and tradition for those who have a relationship with God. Unquote, Oweli Rocha Sokorocha. Our traditional rulers should be set where they will pioneer the community government to bring government down to the people and where people can understand the government, helping us to check crime and helping us to develop the rural areas where most of our people reside. If the rulers are in charge and play a role, the Boko Haram song wouldn't have been what it is today. And to you, our judiciary arm of government, in the new Nigeria, Judiciary shall be made the pivot and the only pivot upon which the wheels of this nation must be built. The laws must be obeyed. And we shall encourage you with a no look back welfare package. That you don't look back in dispense of justice. We shall do so bearing in mind that we have a culture and tradition. So the new Nigeria will advance the course of ADR, alternative dispute resolution. To reduce the number of pilots of cases which have suffocated our judges. And to you, my colleagues, members of the legislature, it's obvious that our budgetary system has not helped us as a nation and have not helped us to achieve more for our nation. And we cannot get the worth of our investment whenever a budget is made. The tax force budget is the way to go in the new Nigeria so that we can get reward and investment as quickly as possible and hold people responsible for projects not executed. <laughs> to you, my youths, the great youth of Nigeria, somebody said to me a few days ago, a young lady walked up to me and said, what would you do about NSAS and police brutality? And I said to them, there's nothing like police brutality. What you have is youths brutalizing youths out of frustration. The policeman on the street that brutalizes his brother, this so not because he's a police, it's because he's a young man frustrated. So for my youth, the economy under new Nigeria, the youth again shall be the bedrock and the pivot upon which all the wheels of our economy will rotate, anchored by technology. Never again, never again will a Chinese young boy remove his shirt in the morning walking on the street to the manufacturing sector of their economy. 
producing toothpick, producing water, producing juice, only to send it to my, my use to consume. We're not a consuming nation. We shall be a productive nation. The days is over. In the new Nigeria, when all the smokes you see in all premises and houses is a smoke, not of production, but of consumption of Ishe, Unkobi, Masa, and the rest of them. This again will not happen in the new Nigeria. If there be any smoke that must rise, it must be a smoke for production in the manufacturing sector. Our youth are intelligent. Our youth are smart. They're energetic, more than any other youth in the world. But opportunity has not been given to them. New Nigeria shall give you the desired opportunity. And to you, my youth, I want you to walk proud from now henceforth. I know what you have gone through and humiliation. Some of you have left your country seeking for greener pastures. Some of you have no job. But let me say to you, under the new Nigeria, employment shall constitute an infinitesimal part of our strategy. What constitutes the major part is self-employment. Because God has created every man with a gift. Talent must be exposed. And that which God has created it for must manifest. My youth, I salute all of you. But I appeal that I'm going to do this with you. And I'm going to prepare you for the next generation so that when I finish, by the grace of God, I be your president. I shall hand over this mantle to a younger generation. But take note for now, I'm not too young to run and I'm not too old to run. I'm simply a bridge between the old and the young. I'm only 59 years old. And to you, my mothers and women, what we see in Nigeria is women crying for relevance. Our core family values are gone. Mothers, this is your time. First and foremost, we must make you understand that you are, you are not a woman, you are a womb man. That all women are all women are men in the first place, but men with extra responsibility. You should have been called a man, but for the womb you carry. That's why they call you a womb man. In other words, you have extra responsibilities. We shall support you. When people talk about the crisis and insecurity, I ask my one question, who gave birth to them? Our mothers gave birth to them. Our women gave birth to them. If I didn't provide opportunity through my wife to take care of my children, I'm sure they would have been somewhere today. Our core family values must come back. Our rural women must be made financially independent. If women are financially independent, they should be able to control and handle their children. But what can a woman say to a child who's not able to feed? What can you say to that young boy who is 18 years old that is not able to pay for his school fees? You're asking him, go and look for money at all costs and go to school like others do. We must begin to separate criminality out of nature and nations impose criminality. And to you, my diasporans, the best doctors today we have in America is a Nigerian. The one we have in London is a Nigerian. In Kuwait, they are Nigerians. Everywhere you go, our best brain have left us in search of greener pastures. New Nigeria shall build a long golden bridge that will bring you back again to contribute to your quarter, to the development of our dear land. And to you, the armed forces and the police, I'd rather sympathize with you. I'd rather share the pains you go through. But motivation, training, is the way to go. You shall be motivated. And this nation will appreciate you for the sacrifices you are making to keep our nation together and to protect her integrity and territorial basis. That we shall do. But what do you say of a police sergeant 
whose salary is 50,000 naira, and who goes to buy a bag of rice for 30,000 naira, 40,000 naira, 35,000 naira, and have seven children to send to school. We share your pains. The new Nigeria will address this, born out of vision and passion. And to you, holders of our educational system, the teachers, let me say to you, that is my life. For me, education is no longer a way to life, it's life itself. And it's no longer a privilege, but it's a right. And anyone that denies a child not going to school has simply killed the future of that child. It's not a good story to hear today that we have the highest out of school children. 14.5 million children not going to school. Teachers, let me inform all of you. The new Nigeria will declare free education from primary to secondary to university. And if I said to you, I will do that, believe me. Because before I came into politics, I built several schools. And so they can go to the same vision I have for the Church Foundation. I'll bring it to bear to Nigeria. And every child shall count, irrespective of your background or family background or your situation. I want to say to our workers generally, you've done well. But for me, in New Nigeria, which is a socialized production, and men should only be paid according to the labor input. The days of monkey the walk, babu the chop will be over in the New Nigeria. And work must be compulsory. In Imo said, I introduced youth must work, and that worked wonderfully well. We have enough resources to keep, engage everybody. Our problem is not that we are poor. Our problem is our ability to manage the resources of our land. Perhaps at this point, I want to say to all of you that the new Nigerian government shall be compatible. It shall be compatible not of respectability and, and power, but of repose of respect to human rights, of good laws and just administration. Our proper business shall be business of development and improvement. In the times of peace, we shall advance the art of peace and the works of peace. We shall cut forth our land and develop the resources of our land. The new Nigeria basically is meant to help the poor, the needy, the downtrodden, and ensuring that our leaders and those who are privileged are not let alone. Nigeria will soon conquer the world. But let me now tell you why I think I'm a better candidate. And I'm not boisterous in any way, for those of you who know me. But if I had to stand boisterous for the first time, it's only to bear my heart for you to understand where I'm coming from, where I'm going to. The mood of our nation today calls for a leader in 2023 that can unite this country and give everybody a sense of belonging. If I say I will unite this country, believe me, I will do so. I'm not saying I will, I will. I'm saying I've done that already. There's no part of this country or zone you will go without seeing my signature. I'm not from Sokoto State. My signature is in Sokoto State. I'm not from Zaria. <coughs> my signature is in Zaria. I'm not from Kano. My signature is in Kano. It's in Northwest. I'm not from North Central. My signature is in Joss. I'm not from Northeast. My signature is in Adamawa and Bauchi. I'm not from Southwest. My signature is in Ibadan, Oyo State. I'm not from South South. My signature is in Cross River. So when I tell Nigeria we unite this country, believe me, I can do that because I've done that in the past. And I challenge all those coming to contest with me to show what they have done in uniting this country. Not that I will. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
The mood of the nation also suggests that this nation, the way it is now, requires a compassionate leader. A leader of compassion. Who can listen to the downtrodden, the widows, the poor and the needy and show concern. I'm blessed with six children. But today I'm a proud father of over 25,000 children. I don't know where they come from. I don't know who they are. But I've adopted them as my children. I've given them education. Most of them are Flanny boys, Hausa boys, Yoruba boys, Igbo, Zephyr. In Imo State alone, I have three schools, Rochester Foundation College of Africa, that brought the entire African nation under one roof. I have Rochester Foundation College of G, and Rochester Foundation College Primary School, Oboko. I've trained more than 5,000 Fulani children. I've trained more than 6,000 Yorubas. I've trained more than 10,000 Igbos. I don't know them. I don't know where they come from. What I connects me with them is poverty, because I was once a child of poverty. And I swore to God Almighty, Lord, when you bless me, I must bless others. When you give me, I must share with those who do not have. Because on my own, I can do nothing. But I can do all things through God who gave me strength. That's my heart. That's how I feel. But I have reward for what I do. Only last week, Abdullahi, my son from Kano State, walked up to me with, with a peep of star. I said, Daddy, I want to decorate you. I said, what is this? He said, now I'm an SP. I, I'm that little boy who had no father, no mother that you trained. Now I have been decorated by the police as assistant superintendent of police. <laughs> Daddy, I've come to pro pro provide you this medal of honor. For me, that day, that was my salary. That's my joy. My joy is to see a Nigeria where there will be no more poverty and no more killers. This nation... When I say I have compassionate heart, believe me, I do. And if there's any candidate who have more compassion for the poor or who feels for the downtrodden more than myself, let him so speak. <laughs> this nation is in their need of building the economy. It's of a truth that we have had so many economies who run the affairs of this country. We have had the Soludos, the Konji Wallas, and the best brains. But why is this still poverty in this land? We have had presidents and governors, local government chairman, me, myself inclusive. Why do we still have poverty in this land? This nation is in their need of someone who can create wealth. This nation is in the need of somebody who has the vision to, to make money for this nation. Do not kill your leaders. Don't kill your president. Don't abuse them. Don't insult them. Because the problem of Nigeria is the amount of money in Nigeria is far too small compared to the problem it has. When you come out and say the leader has done this and done that, the leaders have done nothing. A passenger does not help the, hate this country. Now that was, you say Buhari doesn't like Nigeria. You will not be fair to Buhari. Buhari loves this country. You cannot be fair to him to say Buhari does not want you or want to, doesn't want to stop Boko Haram. It's not true. He wants to stop it. Do not blame your leaders. Don't kill them. The problem is for every one billion naira problem, Nigeria has 10,000 naira to solve. But what it requires now is that radical businessman who can turn nothing into something, like I've done in my time. I will do that. I'm not one of those when they come to power. They, they start singing the songs of blame and start singing the songs of complaint. I will not complain. I will take responsibility. All things are passed away. Behold, when the new start. I'll create wealth. I'm preventure if you want to know. I'm a child of poor parentage. I went through the street trading of oranges, coconut, to, to be where I am today. My source of wealth is clean and it's straight. And if you want to know who I was before becoming a governor, go to Conduct Bureau and check my records. 
You agree with me that Rochas was Rochas before, go, before politics? Yes. And if there's anyone who has created more wealth than myself before going to politics, let him so say and come and compete. <laughs> Where poverty persists, ethnicity thrives. Where poverty persists, blends, becomes the order of the day. Nigerians are not enemy to one another. Our biggest enemy is hunger. I've come to address that in the new Nigeria. And that must be addressed. And that we should do. I said these three points, and I believe that all of you will agree with me, that if we are the basis of taking, who should be your president? That's where I stand out. It is for this reason that I want to inform you that please permit me to be your pilot for the new Nigeria. That I might pilot this aircraft of the new Nigeria to its destiny and serve arrival to destination. I understand as I take off with this plane, as your pilot, there might be some few turbulences. Don't worry, nothing to worry about. Captain Rochas is in command. But it will get to a point after the rough, bad weather that we shall get to the cruising point when I shall say to Elijah Audi, to Fessa, to Martins, to Sabo, to Oke, to Adamu, to Shegum. I said, come on board. Come, lift, untie your seatbelt. And let us enjoy the new Nigeria. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let me profess on. And to tell you, there shall be a new political order. All I want to appeal to our politicians and those who want confusion to please think about the unity of this country. Today, you may have heard that people are talking about zoning, rotation. I'm not a candidate of rotation. Neither am I a candidate of rotation or zoning. I'm a candidate of justice. Maybe the Southeast or the South has not been able to present their matter very well before the rest of Nigerians. I'm sure if you tell to a Muslim, a Northerner, and said to him, remember my friend, my friends from the north, and my brothers of the Muslim Umar, that remember that the principal cardinal point upon which Islam is built is justice. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam acknowledged the fact that in Quran chapter 16 verse 90, he says, Inna Allah, Yagmur, be adil, what is he saying? Verily, God commands justice and fairness. It's for this reason that I think. Nigerians may not know that at this crucial point, when zones have attempted the presidency of Nigeria, and when it feels like it's a turn for the southeast, another night will come out. He's simply saying to the Igbos, who are you? That's a feeling. Or a southwest, our brother from the southwest will come. I want to be a president. You should not be. He's simply saying to Igbos, who are you? We must never do that so that children yet unborn may not feel that they're not part of this country. It's only on, on the basis of justice that I speak for this to give Igbos a sense of belonging. Other than that, I qualify to run with anybody who cares to run. But where that is not possible, we can shape that.
But I appeal to my party, the APC. They should allow a play level ground. And the boss must understand that the power is not given. Power is taken. You must go out and reach out to people as you speak. And you're going to say power. Because no one will give you power. But let justice reign. When all this is done, ladies and gentlemen, as I declare to run for the office of the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, come 2022. I, thank you, 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 thank you. Thank you, thank you. I want to give you a picture of Nigeria, a new Nigeria of my dream. When this happens, and there'll be a new Nigeria. These are green, white, green, will begin to fly over hills and dells, over nations, over Japan, over America, over China, over Dubai, and begin to command the commerce of those areas. When that time comes, the new Nigeria comes, we shall be our brother's keeper. Hafsa Ibo, Yoruba, Efik, Ijo shall sit on a round table of brotherhood, embracing one another. When that time comes, a military sergeant, a young boy who wears suit like I'm wearing suit today, will show that stress high and say, I'm a Nigerian. And that day I will join you at that Eagle Square to remind you of the old national anthem. We says, no tribe and tongue may differ in brotherhood we stand. God bless the Federal Republic of America. It's very much ladies and gentlemen. Was the Former governor of Imo State, Senator Rocha Sokorocha, speaking on his presidential ambition. He spoke about his passion for the country and humanity. He also expressed his heartbreak over Nigeria's security situation, economic hardship, and instability. He says he's here to help Nigeria, and he wants the world to know that a new Nigeria has come.